Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. The beginning of uh, each new year comes with all kinds of expectations, great expectations. And yes, it can be fun to look back on the previous year and, and re, uh, remember all of the events that, uh, that took place, even though there might be some ups and downs, good days and bad days, joys and sorrows. And maybe we'll look back at the last year and think maybe it was a great year or maybe it was a horrible year. But whether the last year was great or horrible or somewhere in between, we always look forward with great expectations in the new year. We look forward to let, uh, to what lies ahead for us. Maybe it's some uh, wonderful family event, a, a wedding or uh, the birth of a new child, or maybe we're looking forward and expecting a, a great, uh, a great uh, family vacation, or maybe... Uh, we're looking forward to some new opportunities in our lives, graduating from high school and going off to college or maybe getting that promotion that we've been waiting for for a long time. Or maybe we are looking forward to a change in our lives. Yes, as much as we dislike change, sometimes we look forward to it. We anticipate it. We expect it. Maybe we're looking forward to moving to a new location, starting a new job or uh, maybe even retiring for some of you. Or maybe we just simply look at this year as the year that we finally get over the hump, that, uh, that we turn our lives around and we get back on track. Yes, the new year brings all kinds of uh, great anticipation and high hopes. And on the banks of the Jordan River, the people were in expectation. Their hopes were high that this was finally going to be the year in which, uh, in which uh, the Messiah was finally going to come. Maybe this was the year that Rome finally got off their back and they were going to uh, live as a free people and have, uh, be a world power and rule over the world with God's rule and law. And maybe John the Baptist was that guy who was going to lead them there. Maybe he was the Messiah that they'd been waiting for. But John is quick to point out that he is not the Messiah. I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. John directs the attention away from himself and he points us to one who is mightier than I. He points us to Jesus. And just like the crowds on the banks of the Jordan, sometimes our expectations are misguided as well. We might be looking in all the wrong places, looking to all the wrong things, all the wrong people. And whether last year was a great year for you or if it was a horrible year or somewhere in between, we want this year to be better, right? We always want the new year to be better than the last. And so we so often look to politicians and governments. Maybe we look to our family and our friends or maybe uh, we look to our, our careers and our bank accounts. And worse yet, maybe we look to ourselves to make things better better. But these things are not the Messiah. We are not the mighty one. There is one mightier than I. And this one who is mightier than we are comes to baptize with the Spirit and with fire, to clear the threshing floor, to gather in the wheat and to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, I think when we, uh, when we think of uh, the baptism of Jesus, we have in mind uh, that great picture that's something a little bit more like this, very serene and peaceful and calm of Jesus rising up out of the water and, and the bright glow of the dove, the Holy Spirit descending upon him with that loud voice 
of, the, uh, of God the Father crying out, This is my Son. And we do get that here in Luke's Gospel, but it's very, very brief. Instead, we almost get more of a focus on John the Baptist. But again, John takes kind of a back seat here as he points us to the one who is mightier than he is. As he points us to Jesus. But here in Luke's Gospel, this baptism of Jesus is almost anything but peaceful and serene. As the focus there seems to be on John, and uh, who winds up in prison because he's repenting, uh, he's preaching repentance to Herod the Great and calling him out in all of his sins. Uh, and he's preaching this baptism by fire, clearing the threshing floor and burning with uh, burning the chaff. And with many other exhortations, John preached the good news to the people. But this doesn't sound like much good news. Baptisms by fire and uh, clearing the threshing floor, burning the chaff, it sounds much more like judgment. And that's not good news. But sometimes... Fire has a cleansing power. It has a cleansing power when it's used as a refiner's fire that burns out all of the impurities and precious metals and gold and silver so that all that's left is that pure gold and silver, those precious metals. All of the impurities are burned out and they are gone. And John, uh, Jesus connects his baptism to this in Luke 12 when he says, I have come to cast fire on earth. I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how great is my distress until it's accomplished. Jesus here is pointing us to his cross. To the baptism of his cross where he will be immersed with God's wrath and God's judgment upon him. The judgment and wrath that was meant for you and me because of all of our sins. For Jesus had to step down into our place. The sinless Son of God had to take on our sins to be baptized with the baptism that we need. But he was baptized with a baptism on the cross. So that we too are baptized into him. It's in, uh, this is the uh, point that Paul uh, makes in Romans uh, chapter 6. You are baptized into Christ. You're baptized into into his death. You are baptized into his resurrection. Your sins are crucified with Jesus on the cross. Uh, that, uh, that that burning anger of God's wrath for your sin was poured out on Jesus so that our sins would be put to death and be no more. So your sins were crucified and put to death with him on the cross. And in Jesus' fiery baptism on the cross, the impurity of all of your sins are burned away. So that rising up out of the waters of baptism, all that remains is that precious metal, that precious treasure that you are. Not because you're so great, but because of the one who is mightier than you. Because of the one who is mightier than I. So being connected to Jesus through baptism, uh, with all of the impurities of our sin burned out of you, God can now say this about you. Just as he said to his son, This is my beloved son. You are my beloved sons and daughters. With you I am well pleased. As the prophet Isaiah says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I am with you. 
and through the rivers. They shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flames shall not consume you. We've certainly uh, passed through some treacherous waters and walked through fire, not just these last years or two, but each and every day of our lives, all throughout our lives. Each and every year has its trials and tribulations, its ups and downs, its good days and bad days, its joys and its sorrows. And I have no idea what 2022 is going to Uh, what it's going to have in store for you. It might be a great and wonderful year. It might be a horrible year. I don't know. But there's going to be those ups and downs, the good days and the bad, the joys and the sorrows. But through it all, God is with you because you are His. You are baptized into Christ. And this is the good news that John was proclaiming that you are baptized into Christ. You are baptized into his death. You are baptized into his resurrection so that all of your sins are forgiven and salvation is yours. It's yours each and every day for the one who is mightier than us humbled himself to the very point of death, even death on a cross so that we might look forward with eager expectation, whether it's good or bad, to the joys of his gifts that he has given to us. For forgiveness, life, and salvation is yours each and every day of our lives because we are baptized into Christ. Amen.